The Lions are now one preseason game away from having to make some some tough decisions on, on both sides of the football, offense and defense, in terms of the 53-man roster. I'm going to focus on one spot here, one position, obviously wide receiver, which I think is a difficult one for Detroit. If either of the three top wide receivers end up being injured at any point during the year, I'm in Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and Khalif Freeman. That's a solid group. They're established. They know their role. They know the offense, obviously. And more importantly, the coaches know what they can do. The loss of Josh Reynolds to free agency has opened up a spot for another wide receiver to potentially be used in the event of injury or perhaps in the occasional 11 personnel groupings for whatever reason. Now, throughout training camp, certain guys have been described or mentioned by media members as playing well. Nonetheless, as recently as a week ago, Dan Campbell stated, we're waiting for one of those guys to step forward. He was almost pleading with that position for someone to to make themselves obvious as the choice that they have to keep or, or, or the two, if, if you ask me, they've got to. Talking about the, the group competing for a roster spot and perhaps added flavor or added production as a special teams player. And some of these guys are former quarterbacks. And as I go through some of the film, I'll talk about that. Now, DPJ, Donovan Peoples-Jones, he's the most established of the group. Antoine Green, unfortunately, suffered a a concussion cut and then now placed on IR. There's a bunch of other guys competing that are part of that group. Traquan Smith, uh, Darius Fountain, Caden Davis, Tom Kennedy, and then my favorite is Isaiah Williams from Illinois. Nonetheless, I'll start the film breakdown talking about Caden Davis. It's quite obvious to me which one of these guys is is more substantial as far as overall global impact that's consistent across the two games in the preseason. Starting with Caden Davis, however, he did make the big play against the Chiefs. It's an over concept, a deep over. The Lions are, are max protecting it. Davis is coming from the bottom side of the screen. The Lions are max protecting it out of a 21 personnel formation. And Davis is working inside off the cornerback. Now, this corner is zoning off. So he's releasing Davis to the opposite side. It's a three deep, three under coverage because it's a zone blitz, basically. You've got a strong safety to the boundary side, top side of the screen that came on a blitz, probably to stop the run. So three deep, three under oftentimes gets hurt by this deep over concept. Sudfeld hit Davis just before the topside corner could get involved. It's actually kind of a throw on the backside a little bit. I think Sudfeld must have peaked and saw this corner because he didn't necessarily lead him, meaning lead Davis directly into that guy. He almost made him have to slow down and stop. It ended up working out in their favor, right? Uh, it It was intentional. If you ask me, Davis found himself free. I don't think he necessarily is winning a one-on-one there. He's also had some bad luck in a few situations. Uh, This is not one of them, however. This is a route that Williams has taken advantage of multiple times, so I'm I'm showing this to to draw a comparison uh, between or contrast between the two. You'll see it in a little bit. Davis is going to be running the underneath drag, and he's not looking for the football at all. If it's man, you keep running. If it's zone, you kind of sit down. He doesn't even look for the football, regardless of what he's doing, regardless of what he if he's reading man or if he's reading zone. Sudfeld obviously read zone. I thought I think he expected Davis to kind of settle a little bit. Davis keeps running, also doesn't look for back for the football. I think not only is it an incomplete pass, it's a missed opportunity to get a catch here on a third and six, and Caden Davis to potentially convert for a first down. He's also been a little unlucky, as I said, on a few occasions. Overall, for the preseason two games, he's got three catches on 11 targets. He had a chance on this one. Well, by the target, he had a chance officially and maybe break a tackle on a third and 13 to convert it. But the pass by Sudfeld is deflected here and ends up going too high in the air. Caden Davis doesn't really have an opportunity, even though... Technically, it goes down as a target on the stat sheet. He doesn't really have an opportunity. If the ball was almost on top of him here, he's got a chance to catch it and and then try to break a tackle. So a little bit unlucky in this instance. Fourth and two against the Lions, week one of the preseason. This is the the play that I did not like. Um, Throw by Sudfeld late. Caden Davis starts uh, down here at the bottom side of the screen, and he's going to 
almost kind of run a little bit of an over concept late. There's there's technically three options on this play. The nickel from the other side, I think, makes a fantastic play throughout. It's a sprint concept by Sudfeld to the top side. Watch that nickel. Look for work. Try to get underneath of that outside deep out route. And then settle in the window such that when Sudfeld does throw it, he's able to break on the ball and make a great catch. Neither Kennedy nor Fountain is, is open on this concept. The nickel, like I said, makes a great play. But it, look, it's a fourth and two. Sudfeld has to throw it. It's low, Yeah, it's low percentage in terms of the completion now, but he doesn't have a choice. He's not going to be able to scramble outside the pocket. So while Davis is three for 11 overall on catches to targets, and that, and that certainly doesn't look great, you know, in reality, it could be considered like three for eight or maybe three for nine. Neither what, neither one of which is is overly impressive, impressive in and of itself either. The guy who certainly has the physical attributes and the NFL statistics to fit with this Lions team is obviously DPJ as a, as an X wide receiver, 6'2", 210, 215 pounds, I believe. NFL veteran of four years at this point. He's 25 years old. He's from Michigan. Obviously, you guys know that. Nonetheless, he's been underwhelming in the preseason, just not sharp on certain routes. I think he's a little slow getting out of here and then making the break, and I think the break isn't certain, isn't uh, incredibly explosive either. I think this is his fault. I think this ball is thrown pretty much where Hendon Hooker and the coaching staff would want it. He do, He's not winning in space, and this is tight space, obviously down near the end zone, <clears throat> um, and I don't think he's winning vertically. He's not threatening people vertical enough to be able to separate at times. Now, you know, everything hasn't worked out in his favor at times, don't get me wrong, in terms of where the ball has been thrown. thrown. And even though he's been underwhelming statistically, I could, I could still see him making the roster because of what the Lions staff knows he can do at the NFL level. I'm going to talk about what I saw as a Ravens fan, 2021 and 2022. Comparing him, how he looks now, to when I observed him playing for the Browns, he looks stiff, looks less athletic to me than I remember. Look, he had twenty. He played against the Ravens five times in 2020, 2021, and 2022. He had 20 catches for 275 yards during that time period. Now, those 20 catches also came on 27 targets. Facing him, he always seemed to make to be athletic and make big plays against us. I had the perception that he was this explosive wide receiver. <clears throat> Look, his rookie year of 2020, he averaged 20 yards per catch. 2021, 17 yards per catch. 2022, when he had, I think, 61 catches, 13.8 yards per catch. That type of athleticism just hasn't been on display. He's not really being doing, done any favors here. You've got an outside leverage corner. They look to be playing a funnel coverage here with the corner. And, and, the, and the number two defender at the second level where they're trying to funnel everything into the safety. So outside leverage corner, speed out. There's not really going to be a great window there, if you ask me. But he's not winning on any particular route that you can say is reliable. If, if you disagree, you know, feel free to let me know. But I just don't think he's looked tremendously explosive. If you watch the film and think that he can suddenly be called upon to make plays and get open. Yeah, he did have the 26-yard catch from Sudfeld against the Giants. It's a, it's a very good catch. Ball thrown a little bit behind him. Um, that route and this one, this is Josh Reynolds routes, if you ask me. Dig routes. Deeper routes, making an in cut 12, 14, maybe 15 yards down the field, <clears throat> and winning to the inside. He has the size to do it. The resume looks good. You've got a guy who had 60 catches at one point compared to the other wide receivers that we're talking about. Had a catch percentage during his best season of 63.5%. At six foot two, 25 years old, that all looks good, but the film does not. I, I still don't have a, an issue if you as a Lions fan say, hey, we should keep him because he's one year, $1.3 million salary, low cost for the team. It just doesn't look like a Lions player to me through two games. Now, that's probably a little unfair, too early to judge. I would be happy to be wrong because he seems like a great dude just from all, all the quotes from him post-game and, and in media sessions. Maurice Alexander is an interesting player just from the, the perspective of his background, although the preseason stats for him are not super impressive either. I think three catches 
on six targets. Doesn't really look like a, a super explosive player to me from a speed standpoint. You got him in the slot here against the Chiefs, along with Isaiah Williams, who's checking down. And then Alexander's going to bring his route over the middle. They're occupying this inside linebacker's eyes, or they're giving him bait, something to deal with underneath. And then Hendon Hooker throws it over the top. Alexander was a high school quarterback, college quarterback, actually. He's a very high-level quarterback in the Miami area. He won a state championship as a quarterback there at, I think, a 3A or 4A school. He eventually did switch to wide receiver in college and has moved on and off the Lions practice squad for the better part of pretty much two years. I think he was signed in August of 2022. I do wonder about his ability to get open in a regular season game from an athletic standpoint. It's a cool story for him to be, you know, switch positions in college. I think he ended up with 65 or 70 catches in his career in college. At this point, though, he's 27 years old, probably not the guy in the lead comparing these players, but he's been in a couple of positives. He's been in Detroit for two years. He's got potential use as a, as a returner. They must like him if he's been around for two years on and off the practice squad, and he keeps coming back, agreeing to come back. Maybe he doesn't have a ton of other options. I actually think he's held here. I talked about this after the Giants game. I won't give you the end zone angle. I'll try to pause it. Pretty sure, and he's got white on white, you know, white sleeves on a white jersey. Pretty sure he's got the hip or the abdomen grabbed, and he's pulling Alexander back. You can see his Alexander's right shoulder come back this way and his left shoulder tilt clockwise. Pretty clear indication that he was held, but I might have the playlist in the wrong order here. I'm not, I'm not going to show 10 or 12 plays for every single guy. I will for the last one. I do, I do like Alexander. He does have a 20-yard reception, or excuse me, return on a kickoff, the dynamic kickoff. He's another guy that I think has two targets that were either tipped or, um, or inaccurate. This one, I believe, is tipped. Other people um, did not. He's checking down here on this little angled curl at the top of the numbers. And then Hooker got a, a clear line of sight. You do have an inside linebacker, you know, potentially inside out, who could who could get there. But I think 94 has tipped this football, and it ends up uh, being off target. He also has muffed a punt and certainly just has not been as impressive as the last guy I want to talk about. Heading into this preseason finale against the Steelers, who've also had a really rough go of it offensively so far. I think that's kind of been well documented. But the guy who's had the most consistent impact in the two games that we've seen is Isaiah Williams. He went undrafted out of Illinois. He's patented this route already, this kind of underneath drag. And if it's against man, he just keeps running to the sideline. If it's against zone, which you'll see in a minute against the Chiefs, he sits it down. I covered it a little bit during the Caden Davis section. Yes, it's an Iman Ross St. Brown route. Iman Ross St. Brown will pretty much play um, no matter what the injury is. So I understand you don't really need a backup for him. He was a Big Ten, all Big Ten performer, I think in 2023, maybe it was 2022, he had combined 164 catches, 10 touchdowns his last two seasons there. He's also a converted quarterback, but he has more playing time at the college level as a quarterback. Also has more yards after the catch in the preseason here, which I think stands out from all of these other guys, except for Caden Davis and the big 61-yard touchdown return. He actually, one game in college, had 191 rushing yards while playing quarterback against Rutgers. This is a little stop and then go over the middle. These are the types of little choice routes, shake routes, juke routes, whatever you want to call them that he's clearly good at. I think he's very agile, but definitely not an X receiver. 5'10", 5'11", 185 pounds or so. He's going to play in the slot. I think he's playing really well. He's made great use of these underneath routes, drags. Here's a shake, you know, or hesitation, or whatever you want to call it. It's a big feature, a big part of, of Ben Johnson's offense passing attack, particularly on third downs. So far during the preseason, 10 catches on 12 targets. Now that's only for 72. If I did my math right, it's only for 72 yards. But it is a, it, he has achieved a number of first downs. Here's another one. Kind of a hesitation, letting the tight end release vertically. And then Williams is hesitating and then running the underneath drag. And then Hooker seems to have a nice connection with him, finds him underneath quickly, third and six, able to get eight or nine yards out of it. He's a clean catcher of the football, in my opinion, meaning he catches it and he's on the move. Number one, he has some wins against man. Number two, I would have loved for him to complete this play I'll show you in a moment against the Chiefs. I think it was a, an out from a, a slot position. 
Here's an example for you of what I'm talking about against man or zone. He sees the defender dealing with the running back, so he's going to sit down. Sudfeld also reads it. Very similar to the play that Caden Davis kept running on, but the timing is, is a little bit different, if you ask me. Now, maybe I'm putting too much emphasis on his performance against second stringers playing for other teams, and that's okay. But he looks the part, to me, compared to these other guys. When he gets the ball in his hand, he looks the part. When he's running his routes, he looks the part. After, after the catch, being able to set up his moves, <clears throat> he looks the part again. Deep over concept, 37 yards. Now he's wide open, right? I think this is an easy choice for who to keep as – well, they need to keep two. You go into – with a 53-man roster, you go into a game with five wide receivers. Slight hesitation, and then another over concept. Chiefs did not play that concept well. I do think that his his catches are spread out over the course of the four quarters, meaning it's not like he's got 10 catches, but they're all in the fourth quarter against – third stringers, or guys that are just trying to make the practice squad. I really like Isaiah Williams' game. He doesn't fit as a replacement for Josh Reynolds at all. DPJ does. The guys in our Discord, our Lions Discord, made a great point, multiple guys did, that Sam Laporta can play outside wide receiver, and I totally agree with that. I don't know how many times per game he's going to do that. By the way, this is an 11-yard run into the boundary where we know Ben Johnson likes to attack on a jet sweep concept out of 12 personnel. So you've elicited the base defense by the Chiefs. 4-3 where they rolled the Sam up into the boundary. So it's basically an under front. Except they've kicked the three over. So it's an under front with a three technique to the tight end and one backside. They've done that because there's two eligible tight ends here. So they want the Sam and the corner. And they've rolled up the strong safety to the field. And the Lions, perfect call if you ask me to take advantage of it. They're just going ahead and trying to reach out there. Isaiah Williams, quick cut outside the D-tackle, 11 yards. I do think that one thing to talk about in terms of who they select or who they try to make wide receiver four, if you will, and wide receiver five is it's a big year for Jamison Williams. They need him to be an X receiver, depending on how often they put him in the slot. He can propel this, op this team, this offense forward. I think Isaiah Williams is the best guy by far of the players that are here in terms of how he's playing and his athleticism. Great catcher of the football, significant burst, changes directions really well, makes people miss. In case you don't know, and by the way, this is the one I was mentioning earlier. This is a fade out, and I wish he had caught. He wish he had been able to catch this. I think it's Jaden Hicks, the rookie from Washington State, who's defending him, and I think he's grabbed cloth here at some point. The ball is already out, like I said. Hendon, well, this is just the Sudfeld, but Hendon Hooker and Sudfeld both have confidence in Williams. I wish he'd been able to make this this contested catch here with what I think is a lot of contact that I've seen called in this day and age. But looking back at him at his career at Illinois, he had 2,300 receiving yards at Illinois. He also had 500 rushing yards from his time earlier in his career as a quarterback, and I think that's significant. The potential usage on trick plays in Ben Johnson's offense. Another sure-handed player, another former quarterback who handled the ball on every snap as a quarterback. He was involved in a number of option plays or handoffs or fake handoffs. I think this is the guy they keep. I think he's the best guy of the bunch from what we've seen through two games. That could change in week three, depending on opportunities, depending on health, and depending on coverage. they got to keep two, obviously. You go into a regular season game, with five, five wide receivers, or maybe even six, if one of those guys, one of those six, can play a lot on special teams and add value as a returner or on kickoffs and punt teams. Isaiah Williams adds value as a returner. He does have a muff punt, I think. Who else is kept besides him? My coaching instincts tell me to not say DPJ. Nonetheless, he's 25 years old. They signed him to a one-year contract. He is from Michigan. He's six foot two. He can play the X position. Theoretically, he's the guy that has the, the frame and the playing history to do some of the things that Josh Reynolds did. I just don't think he's in the same class or quality there. Uh, you know, there's others that I didn't cover besides Davis, Williams, Alexander, and DPJ Fountain. I didn't show any film of Tom Kennedy. L looks reliable but unspectacular. I think Campbell's quote a week ago, 
was making it obvious to someone that they needed to see more. He did mention DPJ in that same co press conference. I don't know if he was asked specifically about him by a reporter. I think it was a message, Campbell's quote, was a message to at least one of the guys fighting it out at wide receiver, possibly more. Caden Davis responded with a big play against the Chiefs. He's got experience with three NFL teams, Cardinals, Broncos, and now the Lions. DPJ has the best statistical contribution throughout his career, but he's made none in the, in, in the preseason. For me, I think it's obvious Isaiah Williams is on the roster and is a guy who could, could be available in the slot generally and make plays if they need him. Vaki is a, is a wild card as a running back because he's going to play as a returner and he's going to play on kickoffs, perhaps even punt team. He can give you value as, as, a, as a running back who can come out of the backfield and catch the ball. I'm not comparing him to the receivers. I'm saying you want guys to add value. Sione Vaki is the extreme example. Isaiah Williams doesn't add as much value, but I think he gives a ton of versatility, and that's a plus that just goes on top of all the good film that's out there from this preseason. You guys let me know what your thoughts are on that wide receiver situation. I understand people have some consternation or – a fear, anxiety, worry about only having three experienced and capable receivers. Those may be people who are in the DPJ camp being that fifth wide receiver kept as well. Appreciate you guys' time, man. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study slash commentary about the Lions wide receiver situation going into the final preseason game, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.